Hu Tao. I've been pondering over the traditional method of managing complex computing systems. It seems quite intricate. Could you elucidate the roles and responsibilities of these so-called systems administrators or sysadmins? Ah, I. that's a great place to start. Traditional sysadmins are like the overseers of computing systems. They assemble software components into a cohesive service and are responsible for its day-to-day -day operations. Essentially, they ensure everything runs smoothly, like making sure your Adepti sigils maintain their potency. Interesting. So it's like they piece together different elements to create a functional system. But what happens when the system requires updates or experiences unexpected issues? Good question. Sysadmins have to be on their toes, responding to events such as updates and unexpected system hiccups. It's similar to how you might have to respond when a new threat arises in Inazuma, swift and decisive action is required. I see. But I've heard this approach incurs some form of cost. Could you elaborate on that? Absolutely, AI. There are two types of costs in play here, direct and indirect. Direct costs are pretty straightforward. They're related to the manual labor required to handle changes and manage the system as it grows. Manual labor, you say? That sounds like a significant effort. How do indirect costs come into the picture then? Indirect costs are a bit more nuanced, EI. They arise from the division between the development team and the operations team, the very sysadmins we've been discussing. Picture them like the rift between different factions in Teyvat, easily leading to friction and tension. Division between teams? What sort of tensions manifest from such a divide? Great question, I. The tension often stems from differing goals and perspectives. Developers want to quickly launch new features, much like creating new lightning techniques. But ops teams prioritize stability, ensuring nothing breaks, akin to keeping peace and order in the realm. Ah, a classic conflict of interest. It seems these differing priorities could lead to conflict over software releases? Exactly, EI. It's almost like trench warfare. Developers advance with flag flips and incremental updates, while ops puts up launch gates to safeguard changes. It becomes a strategic push and pull, not unlike a game of chess. This ballot sounds fragile. Is it common for both sides to reach an agreement on their objectives? It's quite challenging. They usually have to communicate and negotiate extensively. But when this communication breaks down, it can lead to a lack of trust. Much like relationships strained by miscommunication. I comprehend. The sysadmin model sounds robust yet fraught with inherent challenges. Do companies find it easy to adopt? For many, it's a familiar option with a large talent pool and numerous real-world examples to emulate. But being easy to adopt doesn't mean it's without its set of issues. Indeed, Hu Tao. I take it the complexity of these systems continues to grow with traffic and user demands. You've hit the nail on the head, I. As the system's complexity and traffic grow, so does the need for more sysadmins. It's a cycle that keeps expanding unless managed efficiently. So is there an alternative approach that addresses these complications more effectively? Ah, you've begun to set your sights on the horizon, eh? There are indeed alternative approaches that aim to tackle these challenges, such as the site reliability engineering model adopted by Google. But that's a tale for another time. I look forward to exploring that with you, Hu Tao. Thank you for shedding light on this intricate sysadmin approach. It was my pleasure, eh? There's always a fascinating brew of innovation and tradition swirling through the world, whether it's in Teyvat or the realms of computing. Hu Tao, earlier you hinted at an alternative to the traditional sysadmin model that Google employs. Tell me more about this site reliability engineering approach. Certainly. I, site reliability engineering, or SRE, is Google's innovative response to the challenges and conflicts of the sysadmin model. Instead of solely relying on systems administrators, SRE teams are largely made up of software engineers. Software engineers, you say? That seems a fundamental shift. How does this change the dynamics of system management? The key is in the focus on automation and engineering, EI. By applying software engineering principles, SREs automate many of the tasks that traditional sysadmins would handle manually. It reduces the operational workload and seamlessly integrates development with operations. Automation sounds like a powerful tool. 
How does it help in reducing operational load? By automating routine tasks and creating self-repairing systems, SREs free up time and resources. It's akin to having an artifact that automatically recharges its energy requiring less manual intervention. I see. So how does this integration mitigate the conflict between development and operations? When SRE teams manage systems, they blur the lines between development and operations, creating synergy instead of division. It allows for unified goals and reduces the friction of differing priorities. Unified goals sound harmonious. But how do the SRE teams maintain a balance between creating new features and ensuring system stability? Through engineering practices and thoughtful design. SREs use automation to handle operational tasks allowing them to focus on long-term improvements and stability. It's like balancing between offense and defense in a well-strategized game. Given this complexity, do SREs still face any challenges in their operations? Indeed, there are always challenges. Some include managing rapid changes and maintaining a high skill level within the team, but the approach has shown to address many traditional pitfalls effectively. How do they tackle these rapid changes without compromising the system's reliability? They use something known as error budgets, which allows a calculated amount of risk in releasing new features. This ensures changes are managed without exceeding an acceptable level of service disruption. Error budgets. That's a fascinating concept, so it's about balancing risk and innovation. Exactly, I. It strategically allows teams to take risks without the fear of complete derailment. This freedom fosters innovation, much like how a creative combat strategy might lead to unexpected victories. It sounds like SRE transforms potential conflicts into structured progress. Is this approach common outside Google? While SRE started at Google, many other organizations have started to adopt similar models, appreciating the blend of reliability and development agility it offers. Then Hu Tao, are there other critical practices within SRE that support this reliability and agility? Indeed, practices such as rigorous monitoring and a focus on efficiency are crucial. They ensure systems remain optimized and can handle the demands placed upon them without unnecessary strain. This SRE concept you've described sounds like a robust method to approach system management. How has it fared in real-world implementations? SRE has proven to be successful, offering significant improvements over traditional models. It reduces incidents, encourages efficient resource use, and enables parallel innovation and stability. It seems SRE bridges the gap between old and new paradigms with thoughtful engineering. Must be quite inspiring to observe such transformation. Absolutely, I. It's like witnessing the dawn of a new era in both reliability and engineering. This transformation is just the beginning of what SRE can offer the tech world. I look forward to learning more about other components that make up this SRE approach. Plenty more to explore, I. I'm excited to guide you through it all, much like walking a path of innovation and adventure. Hu Tao, I've been thinking about this site reliability engineering you mentioned. What are the key principles and practices that guide it? Ah, I. Let's dive deeper. A significant principle of SRE is capping operational work to 50% of an engineer's time. This ensures they spend the other half on development and creative engineering tasks, essentially ensuring balance. Capping operational work. That seems quite strategic. How does it influence their day-to-day -day activities? This cap allows SREs to focus on long-term improvements rather than being bogged down by routine operational tasks. It's akin to ensuring the peace in Inazuma while continuing to foster new growth and innovation. And you mentioned something about error budgets. How exactly do they manage change velocity with them? Error budgets are a clever tool. EI. They set a tolerance for acceptable failures within a system. By having a defined error budget, teams know exactly how much risk they can take with new changes without breaching reliability thresholds. So as a calculated risk approach, does that not lead to potential system instabilities? There's always some risk, but the idea is to strike a careful balance. You spend your error budget wisely, ensuring any instability remains within acceptable limits. It's like wielding a sword with precision so it serves you without breaking. 
That's a fascinating perspective. How does this framework of innovation and risk balance out with operational duties? By keeping operational duties under control, SREs can dedicate time to creative problem solving and developing automated solutions. It's all about using software engineering skills to preemptively handle potential issues. That sounds quite efficient. How do the advantages like scalability and innovation manifest in practice? The advantages are vast. SREs enable systems to grow and scale efficiently without needing to linearly increase team size. Also, by aligning SREs with developers, innovation occurs alongside maintaining stability. You mentioned improved collaboration with developers. How does integrating SREs affect this relationship? By having shared goals and clear communication channels, SRE and development teams avoid the divide seen in traditional models. It's like uniting factions for a common purpose, ensuring harmony. I see. But what challenges do these teams face despite these methods? One of the biggest hurdles is recruiting SREs with the right skill set. They need a mix of coding expertise and system management knowledge, which can be hard to find. Recruiting does sound challenging. With such a demanding role, how do organizations attract suitable candidates? Organizations often provide robust learning opportunities and emphasize the innovative dynamic nature of SRE rules. The chance to work on cutting-edge solutions is attractive to many. Given these difficulties in recruitment, does SRE still manage to reach its goals effectively? Yes, despite recruitment challenges, SREs generally meet their targets due to strong internal culture and practices that stress shared responsibility and continuous learning. This cultural aspect seems pivotal. How is it maintained within teams? It's fostered through a blame-free environment where teams learn from each incident rather than fearing failure. Continuous improvement is key, somewhat like refining a technique after each battle. A culture of learning sounds beneficial. How do they ensure this change-friendly environment doesn't lead to chaos? The structure provided by error budgets and careful operational oversight keeps chaos at bay. Everyone's aligned in exploring new frontiers while keeping services reliable, like a team working towards a common celestial goal. The harmony between development and operations seems central to SRE's success. It's fascinating how SRE transforms system management paradigms. Indeed it does. The I, it harmonizes development's innovations with operations stability, crafting an elegant balance like the resonant sound of a fully tuned zither. Thank you, Hu Tao. You've given me much insight into SRE's principles. I look forward to understanding more about their practical applications. It's always a joy to share, I. There's a whole world of knowledge about SRE to explore, and I'm glad to be your guide. Hu Tao, you've taught me about the principles of SRE, but what are the core tenets that truly define its practices? I, the heart of SRE lies in its core tenets such as monitoring, emergency response, change management, capacity planning, and efficiency. Each plays a vital role in ensuring systems are both reliable and scalable. Monitoring seems crucial. How do SREs ensure they keep a system's health in check? Monitoring is about tracking a system's health without generating unnecessary noise. SREs automate this process so that only immediate actionable alerts are sent to humans. This is critical for a swift response, like noticing a storm terror attack before it escalates. Immediate actions. So how does that tie into emergency response? Indeed, I, emergency response is about minimizing downtime and ensuring quick recovery from failures, ideally without human intervention. When humans are needed, having a playbook helps ensure consistency and speed in resolution. A playbook sounds like a tactical guide. How do they handle changes in a live system? Change management in SRE is automated as much as possible to reduce risk. This minimizes the chance of errors during updates. It's like making sure each script in a festival is synchronized perfectly to prevent mishaps. And how about capacity planning? It sounds essential for handling user demand. Capacity planning involves predicting future demands and ensuring ample resources are ready. It's like forecasting a region's elemental energy needs to ensure a stable supply. Forecasting demand seems speculative. How do SREs balance efficiency with such predictions? Efficiency is all about optimizing resource use, 
SREs adjust provisioning based on demand forecasts to prevent overspending and maintain performance. Think of it as perfectly tuning a lyre to maximize its harmonious output. This minimizes waste and maintains readiness, I assume? Exactly, EI. It's about ensuring each resource is utilized effectively, avoiding excess that could lead to inefficiencies. You mentioned automation earlier. What's its significance in this context? Automation handles repetitive and mundane tasks, reducing human error and freeing up SREs to focus on creativity and strategic improvements, like training a team of adepti to function autonomously. So automation is more than efficiency, it provides space for innovation too. Yes, I. The absence of routine burdens allows SREs to innovate, develop, and ensure systems run nearly independent from constant human oversight. This SRE approach seems transformative. How does it lay the foundation for the future of service management? By harmonizing development with reliability, SRE sets a precedent on how service management can be advanced. Its principles inspire ongoing exploration and development in fields beyond traditional boundaries. A truly modern approach, much like seeking eternity through constant renewal. It's been enlightening, Hu Tao. I'm glad to share this journey with you, eh? The path of SRE is one of endless possibilities and depth, much like the spirit of adventure in Tevat.